since last night there's been a lot of confusion because the WTI, the West Texas Intermediate uh, um, uh, prices of oil have gone beyond below zero dollars a barrel. So people are wondering whether we can now, uh, whether you know, gas stations are now going to pay us to fill up our tanks. So uh, what does this mean? Okay, uh, Sandhya, let me put it this way: if you have a tanker, you will make money. The biggest problem today is storage. Okay. So if I'm selling crude to you and you're the buyer, I say I will say that look, you don't pay me, I will pay you for taking the crude oil, simply because I don't have the storage capacity and we have committed to pay. On the other side, the other uh, party is not willing to take the delivery simply because they don't have storage. Now storage is the key right here. So therefore, uh, this uh, crash that you have seen in the price is something that will keep coming up in every contract because these are all futures contract. You know, they you do a contract today for delivery or uh, sales, you know, one month down the line, two months down the line, as the case may be. Now, when the future is uncertain, any future contract will become meaningless. So therefore, that uh, does not mean that we can get, uh, you know, uh, oil or fuel for free. In our uh, case, it's a completely different story, which is the case with many regions. So you're not going to get anything free for now. What is for sure is that the prices will continue to fall. And how much do you think the prices are going to continue to fall by? Are we going to see a drastic drop in petrol and diesel see, sales? Uh, no, if you look at it uh, in two aspects, one is the global crude oil price that will continue to fall because simply there is no demand, as you all know. You know, all the countries are shut down, vehicles are not moving, everywhere uh, there is a complete status quo and complete lockdown. Therefore, fresh oil production will not be there. And even at $20 uh, per barrel, there are no takers. Now, whether this 20 will go down to 10 or 8 is something we don't know. That depends on how the lockdown is lifted. Now, even if the lockdown is lifted, assuming that the lockdown gradually gets lifted uh, in different parts of the country, it may take a month or even two months, the demand for oil is not going to come back overnight. You know, people are not just going to step out and say that, look, I'm going to try and therefore the demand will come back. So therefore, uh, for the next three months, I don't see prices recovery very clearly. If at all, some speculative prices might require, but on the spot, it will not. That is the global scenario. As far as India is concerned, the story is completely, completely different. You know, here the pricing is for all uh, practical purposes, it's still controlled. Now, almost, I think, uh, 30 to 35 percent of our uh, petrol and fuel prices constitutes excise duty and state taxes, various duties are there on that one. Now, our prices will not go down easily. Why? Two, three reasons. One, uh, you know, the government will use this as a weapon to fight inflation when the need arises. Now, when does that need arise? We don't know. Now, how will the government do that? We also don't know because here again, you know, nobody is complaining about oil prices being high, fuel prices being high, you know, you might be paying 73 or 74 in Mumbai and in different parts of the country, more or less uh, give and take, you know, it could be 70, in some cases it could be 80. So 75 will not become 65, even though we are all not consuming. So the, there are, it's a slightly uh, different situation here. One, the refineries have to take the oil. For us, of course, I need to clarify that WTI is not relevant to us. You know, it's the Brent crude and the Saudi crude and the Dubai crude. They are the can I interrupt you there and just can you just yeah. very briefly uh, tell our viewers about what WTI is, what is bread crude, what is relevant to us, what are all these things? Yeah, see, WTI is purely a uh, uh, Texas based uh, uh, crude, whereas Brent is from this side of North Atlantic and Dubai, and it's a basket of crude that we all use. We don't use Brent as uh, WTI as a benchmark. So for us, this is what matters. Now, this is hovering around uh, uh, 20 to $22. And uh, this used to be $60, you know, some uh, three, four months back. It's come down to 20 to $22. Now, this is what is relevant to us. Now, even if these prices go down under the current circumstances, there is nothing much we can do about it because we are not consuming. Nobody is consuming. Let's assume that tomorrow we start consuming, vehicles start moving. The consumption will be still far less than what we have been consuming in the past. Now, why will prices not come down? Two reasons. One, India's storage capacity is very, very, very limited. 
compared to let's say china or uh, you know japan or any other country the storage capacity in india is very very less because we have low storage capacity you know you can't buy and stock now there are two ways of looking at it if i buy today and stock it at 20 dollars tomorrow if it goes down to 10 dollars i'm making a huge loss right so therefore you know it's a double edged sword it can work this way or it can work that way but overall from the macro picture there is a huge benefit that we are all getting now how will that benefit be passed on it will not be passed on now it will be passed on at a time when inflation increases see it is used as an inflation control tool in an indirect manner that is the time the government would come in and say that look inflation is rising let me reduce oil prices so that it has a completely trickle down effect on the rest of the economy today we are not worried about inflation so as of now if you are expecting a oil prices to come down i don't think it will happen in the near future so um just uh, enlighten our viewers now this is not this kind of uh, a tool a strategy to fight inflation is not specific to the current government is it no no this is not specific to the current government this has been the strategy adopted by uh, different governments because it's a mechanism that is used uh, to control your uh, import bill see your import bill matters a lot you know you in this case i think uh, if i'm not wrong it should be about um, uh, 35 to 40 percent of the import bill used to be uh, petrol and petroleum products oil etc now that will come down substantially because of the price advantage in addition what i foresee going forward is that the petrol consumption itself might come down because you know uh, my my guess is that roughly 15 percent of the workforce will work from home you know, I'm talking about urban areas, I'm talking about IT cities, I'm talking about financial cities. You know, it's been very clearly demonstrated that you, everyone need not go to office. You know, people can work from home. So there are other benefits that would be there. And the pressure on oil demand or fuel demand that we saw in the past, that may not come back. Maybe it'll take much longer time. Maybe it'll take another three years. But three years down the line, you have your electric vehicles coming up, batteries coming up. So the situation is going to be completely different. But for now, the government will use this as a strategy. And uh, I, I don't think the government is uh, even thinking on those lines simply because inflation has not gone out of control. And also, see, government uses the revenue that comes from this. There are two parts to this. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, uh, digressing a little bit. Oh, please, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. Uh, one part is the duty collection that the government gets. You know, that's one revenue. The second part is that the refiners you know, whether it's Bharat Petroleum or Indian Oil or whoever the case may be, they import crude at a cheaper price and they sell at the same price. They get a higher margin. When they get a higher margin, they use that take dividend from them. So the government's revenues go up. You know, it's a macroeconomic kind of a situation where the government revenues go up. They can use that revenue to spend on uh, social welfare measures, support the poor people. There are many ways of doing it. The thinking is quite clear, you know, here I would, uh, though it's fashionable to criticize the government for not reducing petrol, because, you know, people uh, like us, we own cars and scooters and bikes and uh, the stuff. We think that petrol prices should be reduced. But then the government thinking is different. You collect the revenue, whatever is the gap, because you're collecting from people who can afford it. That can be collected and redistributed through social measures, uh, schemes, which I think is a good welfare uh, policy. My last question to you, who is affected by uh, the, the um, uh, you know, the WTI or even, you know, uh, Brent going uh, so far down? These speculators or the futures traders, see, they all speculate on the prices, whether the price will go up or down. They are the ones who will be hit very hard. They are the ones who are going to suffer massive losses. Now, what kind of losses, how long, that depends on the existing contracts, which I'm not an expert at because I don't know much about the futures oil trade. All I know is that future contracts might get cancelled or they may have to be reworked. But how will you rework them? You don't know. Now, today, if it has gone down negative, tomorrow it might spike for some reason. If some country comes and says that, look, I'm relaxing the lockdown, it will spike up. So it's going to be very volatile. It's going to be very risky, mainly for futures contracts. We as uh, ordinary consumers and uh, people who drive cars and scooters, we don't have to worry about it. That's good to know. Thank you so much for spending your time and sharing your valuable knowledge with us, uh, Mr. Mulidhar Swaminathan.